Hello, beloveds. It's so good to be with you today. What a week. I don't know about you, but I shared, shed so many unexpected tears on Wednesday, being moved over and over again by song, by words, by gestures, and by the American flag. And it got me to thinking about all the different ways that the flag is viewed through the different decades that I have lived through. And what I wanted to share with you is one of my favorite uses of the American flag. Um, but I need to give you some background before I get to that point. I want to tell you the story about the ministry of Thomas Starr King. Thomas was born in 1824, the son of a Universalist minister. His mother was Susan Starr King. And at age 15, his father tragically died, and he became the sole support of his family. He worked during the day, but he was determined to continue on with his education. So he was a self-taught minister. He created his own curriculum and read and read and read at night. And when he turned 20, he was invited by his father's congregation in Charlestown, Mass, to assume the pulpit which he did, and his reputation started growing as a powerful and persuasive order. And then he was offered the pulpit of the Hollis Street Church in Boston. Again, his reputation began to grow and grow, and before he knew it, as a young man, he was on the lecture circuit of New England, much in demand, along with some of the top speakers of his day. And in 1860, he was invited to, to become the minister of the First Unitarian Church of San Francisco. So this New England minister traveled to California. He was an ardent abolitionist, and therefore very pro-union. And Lincoln was very aware of his ministry and his efforts. Now at that point, when he arrives at California in 1860, there was a lot of talk in California about succeeding, seceding from the Union. And Thomas Starr King took it upon himself to go up and down and preach and speak persuasively about staying with the Union. He went to the gold mines and spoke to miners. He went to the owners of the gold mine and spoke to them about the importance of preserving the Union and actually got them to share some of their wealth with the cause of the Union. While he was traveling around California trying to persuade people in the state to stay with Union, he was taken to Mariposa County and saw the big trees, the sequoias, and he was taken to Yosemite. He was so inspired by the beauty he encountered in the Sierra Nevada, but particularly big trees and Yosemite. He was in regular correspondence with Abraham Lincoln, who credits him with keeping California in the Union. And in helping fund the Union Army through the gold mines. When he returned from this lecturing circuit up and down the Sierras and throughout the state of California, he came back to his pulpit at the First Unitarian Church of San Francisco and he draped his pulpit with the American flag, always preaching about the cause in ending every sermon, regardless of its content, with a prayer for the president and the cause of the union. And as somebody who was a prominent lecturer in New England, of course he knew some of the transcendentalists. So he wrote movingly, not only to Abraham Lincoln, but to the transcendentalists and other lecturers and writers of New England and California about the beauty of Yosemite. So in the midst of the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln created 
a wilderness, a designated wilderness area to be protected, which was the Big Tree area of Mariposa County and Yosemite. This was before Yellowstone became the first national park, but it changed how we viewed the wilderness and our commitment to preserve the wilderness. And Abraham Lincoln did this in the midst of the war. So let us remember, even in the midst of strife and suffering and grief, we can still think about that interconnected web of all existence that includes the natural world and includes all of us and includes this beautiful but broken and healing nation. Thank you so much for joining me today.